Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 23 of Road to Colonization. And we start around Eve, where we arrived last time. We're circularizing our orbit so that we can easily drop our probe into the light side of Eve. I say easily, but dropping a probe into Eve with, like, actual re-entry heating and remote tech is actually no easy feat. Probably for someone much better at the game than me. Um, but I, I have such trouble with Eve for some reason. Anyway, after doing that, we deploy the probe, get its antennas and everything ready. Um, it should just be about able to communicate with everything with that long antenna. Um, anyway, we decouple the um, the docking port because we don't need it anymore and it's just extra weight. And we're in a higher orbit than we thought we would be. So, uh, re-entering entering the atmosphere is actually going to be kind of uh, even harder than usual because we're going <clears> to <throat> be coming in pretty fast. So we are going to have to do some aero braking passes. So, I find the, um, the perfect altitude totally first time I didn't spend an hour um, tweaking around with this, but yes, of course I did. Um, I spent a while trying to find the perfect altitude, and uh, it's it's surprisingly difficult. Um, because shit burns up, or shit runs out of power. Um, <laughs> and with remote tech, you have to kind of pre-plan a bunch of things. So you can see I'm already deploying the parachute, so they'll open at the right time anyway. They're not timed or anything, it's just when they hit the pressure, they'll open perfectly. We close one of our solar panels, um, tell it to wait about three hours to open again. Hopefully we'll be on the surface by then. That means... Um, that will have power at some point. I've uh, stowed the big antenna. Hopefully something will come past, uh, close enough that the small antenna will be able to communicate. The solar panel will deploy and all will be good if you kind of get my drift. We've left one solar panel open so it doesn't run out of power right now because that won't burn off in the upper atmosphere but the other one has to be closed for re-entering the kind of deeper, like thicker atmosphere. So you can see we're starting to make some aero braking passes and uh, yeah, it's looking, it's looking good. Um, and yeah, we're going to do this a bunch of times just to try and slow down as much as possible. I've also set the flight computer just to hold myself prograde. Um, I'm not controlling this at this point. It's all the flight computer. I've It's all pre-planned. I'm just watching this as much as you are. Um, but hopefully it will land before um, the flight computer triggers that solar panel to open. Otherwise, we'll have no power on the surface. And hopefully, mostly, it will survive re-entry because re-entry is pretty intense on EVE. It's... It, it's you need a you need a really big heat shield. You can see the ablator in the top right. It's actually almost come off this uh, heat shield. Um, luckily, on our final pass, there's a weird texture glitch, um, as you'll see. Um, so I actually quick save and quick load, and it sort of reorientates my spacecraft. Weirdly, it doesn't actually do it now. Um, but then, for some reason, when I enter the atmosphere, at some point, it rotates. Like, you can see now, it's rotated. So now I'm using the fresh heat shield. This is just random quicksave bullshit, but yeah. So anyway, this is our final entry. We're actually on a fresh heat shield, which is holding steady on position, which is often a problem with uh, with um, entering atmospheres, but it's looking good. The flight computer's doing its job. We should be on the surface before the other solar panel opens, which is good, because the other one burned off. And it's starting to, it's, it's looking pretty good, but then we lose uh, some science equipment, and then we lose our small antenna. Yes, that's a big problem. That was our only communication means. Now there is no hope of saving this probe. It will hopefully get to the surface, but the other antenna is closed, and I can't open it because I can't communicate with it. The only solution would be to send a Kerbal to the surface, and that wouldn't really, uh, that would kind of defeat the purpose. Anyway, um... If I had, uh, you can see that the heat shield on the bottom is so ruined now that if it hadn't been uh, that one, um, everything, if it, if it hadn't flipped around, it would have blown up anyway. So this just makes it to the surface, and it is my most intact probe that ever has entered EVE. The first probe was, uh, the only thing that survived was a Mechjeb core. The second one was more damaged than this. And this is looking pretty good. If that one antenna was open, shit would be fine. Annoyingly, you can't set that to, I couldn't set that to open later on the flight computer because you have to have it open to uh, communicate and as you like set up the flight computer um, and the only way I could tell it to open later was if it were closed which is not great and thinking about it I probably could have done that if I thought about it when I was on Concordia but hindsight is 2020 and now a little consolation as the sun goes down my solar panel opens so that part of the plan worked and the parachutes worked so next time we just have to include more antennas. Just shit tons of them. Just fucking loads. Just two of these long ones would have actually solved the problem. But yes, that is a bit of a failure. We won't be completing our mission to um, return science data from the surface of EVE, but I'm actually kind of proud of how that went, given that I had to plan it all previously. That's what I like about remote tech. It does, it's a little maddening, but uh, 
Yeah, it's kind of fun. Anyway, we also have a mission to send uh, Kerbal to Gilly. Um, so we're gonna we're planning that right now. It'll be in a few days because uh, orbits and shit. But Illy's, uh, but Gilly's in pretty much the best uh, best place. So anyway, after waiting a couple of weeks, um, we've transferred Jeb into. Uh, the lander, we're filling up the life support, and it's time to go. This is way over life support. This little lander has, like, 80 days of life support or something, and it's only a two-day mission, so, yeah. But anyway, we're getting this away from the Concordia now. We've got to redo the maneuver, but I'll spare you that. Um, and we're going to go meet with Gilly. Our actual mission is to test that little rocket motor, the uh, little tiny um, nuclear one on Gilly, which is why I'm using a nuclear motor for this, because that gives me like four kilometers per second of delta V, which is crazy. Um, but yes, so here we are, just uh, moving on now. Um, the I fire up the engine, realize it's ridiculously low thrust, and to meet the burn even slightly, I'll have to use RCS. So I'm going to use most of my uh, monopropellant for this, um, just because those thrusters apparently provide more thrust than the um, than the nuclear engine, which is Surprising, uh, but I think that only gives me about six kilonewtons of thrust. So wait, I thought the thrusters only give you Maybe they're 1.5 each and it all matches up to six. Well, anyway, basically I get the burn done Use most of my RCS and finish it with the nuclear engine I have to do a bit of a tweak because that was a little late But uh, after playing around a little bit looks like we are going to get nice and close to Gilly um, I'm intending to just to kind of hit Gilly, that means I don't have to get into orbit, because it's so slow around Gilly, the time warp is so slow and it takes so long to orbit, it's like, it's pretty maddening, is what it is. So we're going to do our quick little tweak here, get everything uh, all nice and laid in, and we're going to go land on Gilly, yes, really exploring Eve today, um, I do very much like Eve, but it's hard to send Kerbals here, I can barely get a probe to the surface, as you've seen. <laughs> So uh, I, my Kerbals were like, no man, we're not going, unless you land a giant spacecraft on there intact and it leaves, we're not gonna go down there. You can't even get probes, we're not, get out of here buddy. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna start um, slowing down relative to Gilly before I even get to Gilly, because... Um, because I'm coming through it quite, I'm coming past it quite quickly, and this engine is so pitiful, it's really anemic. And we're going to go and land on Gilly. Annoyingly, we actually already have a probe there, so we get no world firsts or anything. I've kind of forgotten about that. I've been doing this series and road to exploration for so long now, I have so many probes, I just don't even remember. Like, if you look at my um, alarm clock, there's a bunch of shit getting places, and I'm like, I don't know what that is. Like, I've totally forgotten what that Elu probe last time was, and uh, yeah. Um, there's going to be another Elu Pro getting to uh, Elu um, pretty soon, actually. Anyway, let's go land on this. I was going to say, I was going to say, let's go land on this asteroid because that's exactly what it looks like. But no, it's Gilly. It's a moon. It's basically just a big asteroid, um, and the gravity is like ridiculously low. So as we come down, um, you can see I'm just like momentarily throttling up just to balance our velocity. But eventually, we do indeed touch down on the surface under this tiny, ridiculously low amount of gravity. And then I actually have to use the RCS to pull me down onto the surface so I don't bounce up. And that pretty much works. We're going to get Jeb out, hopefully, for a world first. Um, maybe grab some science. Yeah, there we go, world first. And now I need to run the test on that motor. And we get 300 grand. You just saw that thing pop up if you paused it. You'd see I got 300 grand for testing that motor. So mission paid for, despite the failure of that probe. Um, anyway, we plant ourselves a flag, get like a bunch of money for that as well, and all is good. Um, the uh, thing is falling over. Um, that's fine. It's so low gravity, it can just fall onto its solar panel and be fine. But it's kind of difficult to get back into. Anyway, then I leave. Um, apparently forgot to hit record, so you missed me like far leaving Gilly, which is a bit of a shame, because it's always nice to see things. But uh, yeah, anyway, we're just leaving right now, because I... Don't really need to stay here. We planted our flag, we go, we went, we saw, we did the things, and now we're going to go back to the Concordia. Got a nice shot of a uh, Eve rise there, which is always cool to see. And uh, yeah, now we're going to very slowly time warp out of this, because time warping on Gilly is just the worst. It's like, just, my god. <laughs> and then I'm going to start burning a retrograde. Um, but I keep, I'm still basically in the sphere of influence of Gilly, so I keep popping in and out. Um, but yeah. I was also burning the wrong way, because, ugh, I don't know, it was really late. Um, <laughs> I was burning retrograde relative to the surface, but because I'm going slower than the rotation, I was actually burning prograde. Um, yeah, weird stuff is space. Um, it's it's actually why um, on uh, 
uh, Mars, one of the moons, looks like. Forget, forget, forgotten which one it uh, is, but the moons go opposite ways, even though they or, um, orbit in the same direction. Because one of them is orbiting high enough that it's slower than the rotation of Mars, they actually appear to be orbiting in different directions, which is pretty cool. Anyway, now we've got ourselves our deorbit burn. We're going to meet uh, the Concordia. Um, it's actually not deorbit. We're going to stay in orbit. Um, but we do need to do a plane change, and then we'll obviously have to do a retrograde burn. But in these nice high altitudes, we have lots of time for this little tiny engine to work its magic. Um, ridiculously efficient, but ridiculously low thrust. Um, but it's, yeah, it works. I'm, I'm quite a fan of this engine. I've used it for quite a few probes, um, but this is quite a heavy spacecraft because, you know, it has a Kerbal on it. Um, <laughs> did I just call Jeb fat? Um, I don't think Jeb likes me very much, but I'm still mad at him for running that side business while he was on Duna. Um, we might exile him to get to, to Eve. Um, to, no, he's our most badass pilot. He can run a side business if he wants, you know. People are free to do what they want. Anyway. So uh, now we just need to meet the Concordia in orbit's time, and all will be good. And the most of this mission will be done after that. Maybe I'll do a few more little things, but uh, there's not too much to do around Eve, because I'm not planning on landing uh, Kerbal on Eve. As I've said, as you've probably noticed if you've watched uh, a lot of this series, you'll know that Eve and I do not get along. Um, everything I've sent there has been destroyed, including two ridiculously expensive test landers that would also launch from the surface of Eve and get into orbit. Um, yeah, that was a lot of money spent uh, to for a really big fireworks show. <laughs> I'm uh, pretty mad about that. But now we do have technically three probes on the surface, just none of them can communicate, which I'm actually kind of glad about. It's, it is kind of like Venus, like no probe uh, that's ever entered Venus has like, lasted for like any time. Like there are surface, uh, pictures of the surface of uh, Venus, they've done better than my probes, but that's with the whole of like NASA and Russia and shit behind them. Um, but yeah, no, uh, EVE with remote tech and uh, re-entry heating is quite a difficult, quite a difficult thing. Um, with, we, without re-entry heating, not too difficult. Without remote tech, not too difficult. But with both of them, you know, pretty, pretty hard. Um, but yes, anyway, now we're just going to try and get closer. But because I'm actually right next to it, this like little orbital thing that tells me where closer to approach is basically useless. So I just null my velocity and then just fly right at the spacecraft because that's the easiest way to do it. Um, and there we go. We're going to go meet up, going to go dark. Jeb's going to tell them all the stories about the almost gravityless, uh, almost gravityless um, world of Gilly. Uh, interesting fact, if you um, turn on hack gravity on Kerbin and put it to minimum, that is still more gravity than on Gilly. At least I've heard, because it's not actually no gravity, because it's like 0 0.001. Because I, I bet maybe if you set it to zero, it cause a con but <clears throat> cause a bunch of problems. Uh, I don't know though. Um, yeah, maybe I should find out. Anyway, there we go. We're docked, and we get like a hundred grand of world firsts for apparently making our first station, <laughs> which we totally did here. Yeah, it's totally a space station. Anyway, that concludes our Eve business for the day. I think it's been semi-successful. And now moving back to Kerwin, we are launching the biggest rocket. Oh no, it's the second biggest rocket we've ever launched. Uh, it is the Pulsar Z6, which is the Pulsar Z with six, um, with uh, six old rocket boosters, or Pulsar Z6 to you Americans, um, to you Yanks. <laughs> Whenever Penguin calls Americans Yanks, they get really mad at him, so maybe I shouldn't. Um, anyway, what's on top of this? Well, it is an asteroid capture vehicle, um, probably overbuilt because I'm capturing the like tiniest asteroid. Um, partly because I just kind of want to and I've got like almost a year between now and the next thing that's going to happen and I don't want to just burn all that time and partly because I do have a mission but the mission won't pay for this rocket even in reusability mode even in reusable mode um, so yes now we've uh, ditched the giant first stage the uh, boosters won't be recovered because I couldn't figure out how I'd do that because um, <laughs> you know I'd have to uh, it, it would be really difficult to start KSP basically um, but anyway you can see this is just basically a giant liquid fuel oxidizer stage, and then a nuclear stage, and then pretty much just a grabber arm. We're going to go fetch ourselves an asteroid, just for funsies, because I haven't done it in ages, and I've never done it in this series. And you know, it's sometimes you just got to do stuff for fun. Then I switch to the stage, which apparently switches me to an asteroid around Drez. I don't think I clicked on that. I'm pretty sure I clicked on the first stage, but it switched me to an asteroid around Drez. I don't know, man. Uh, <laughs> Who knows why things happen in Kerbal Space Program? Not me. Um, yeah, a bunch of asteroids do get captured around Drez, or maybe they're just put there anyway. Huh, I should investigate that if I didn't hate Drez so much. Although that does make it interesting. 
Ha, huh, do you reckon the developers put it in there so much? Uh, it's, it, it put the asteroids around Drez in there just to make it less boring? Who knows? Anyway, now we're bringing the first stage back, of course. The colossal Pulsar Z. I think this has only launched like two other times, but it is just a really big first stage rocket. I am working on something bigger and also working on something cooler, bringing back my more Falcon 90 type vehicle. Um, but anyway, yes, this lands very safely and we recover it. And then we also bring back the second stage, which lands a little less safely. As you'll see, I uh, the problem is when I like throttle up the engine a little bit, it basically like takes right off. Uh, <laughs> as I think you probably will see, I throttle up a little too much and then it takes off. So it's really hard to balance this because I can't like shut down other engines on this. Um, yeah, so I end up actually touching down a little hard, um, ironically. And then, yeah, we get about eight grand back for this. So very expensive. And then, yeah, I start planning my maneuver to meet the asteroid, but it was about like four in the morning or something. And I just couldn't figure it out because I was tired. But this is what I got so far. So maybe next time we'll capture an asteroid. Maybe also visit Elu again. Maybe do some Duna and Eve. I don't really know. But come back. There'll be some cool stuff. At some point, we'll be getting to Jewel with our probe, which finally... <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this. This has been episode 23 of uh, Road to Colonization. It's been a little shorter today, but like I, I kind of ran out of time. Um, but yes, I hope you have enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I will see you next time.